In this video, we discuss how to construct an icosahedron and to use it to construct a sphere. An icosahedron is a polyhedron with 20 faces. Here, we consider a regular convex icosahedron, which has 12 vertices lying on a spherical surface. It has 20 equivalent triangles as shown in this figure. By subdividing a triangle, we get four smaller triangles. So you can see that we get uh, an 80 phase uh, polyhedron. And we do one step more, we get 320 uh, triangles. And that approximate is sphere better. We assume that the center of the sphere is at the origin O with coordinates 0, 0, 0. Okay. Now the foreign code implements the 12 vertices of the haiku sahedron. We have uh, the constants A equals 0.525 blah, 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 and B equals 0.8565 uh, blah, blah. So the vertex data okay, are shown here. So if we have Total 12 vertices and each vertex has three coordinates x, y, c. And now you can see that uh, the coordinates consist of an A and a B and a zero. Okay? So there's always a zero uh, in the in a vertex coordinate. So that means uh, x squared plus y squared plus c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So basically it is equal to the sum of the squares of these two numbers. And if you calculate that out, uh, you'll find that it is equal to 1. Okay. So this imp implies that all vertices are on the surface of a unit sphere. Okay. Now here, it shows you uh, the subdivision of a triangle. So these are the vertices, and we take the midpoints of the vertices, then we get uh, four triangles by joining uh, the midpoints. Okay. And we can continue this step. Okay. Again, get the midpoints of this, we get four triangles. Okay. And uh, each time okay, we do a subdivision, we multiply the number of triangles by 4. Now here it shows you the uh, details of the subdivision. So in this example, V1, V2, V3 are the vertices. So the midpoints, uh, say V1, 2 is half of V1 plus V2. And the midpoint V2, 3 is half of V2 plus V3 and so on. Now you may ask this question. After subdivision, the new triangles are still on the same plane. Okay. How could more triangles approximate a sphere better? Okay. Well, the trick is to normalize the vectors to the midpoints, which pushes the points to the surface of the sphere. For instance, the vector v12 equals uh, vertex v12 minus the origin O, uh, coordinate 0, 0, 0, and it is equal to uh, the point V12. Okay? The magnitude of the vector is smaller than 1. But when we do the normalize, we get the vector V12 dash, which is equal to V12 divided by its magnitude. Okay? And the magnitude of this new vector is equal to 1. Okay? And basically, this means we have pushed the point we want to further out and it will be on the surface of the unit sphere. Now, here's the implementation of uh, the icosahedron. It is pretty straightforward. Uh, these are the constants A and B, and these are the 12 vertices. Okay. Each vertex has three coordinates, 
uh, that I just showed you. Okay. And these are the triangle indices. So we have two, three, uh, three, uh, 20 triangles, and each triangle has three vertices. Okay. Like this uh, 0, 1, 4, it refers to uh, uh, this vertex, 0, and then 1, uh, this one, and then 4 is this one, okay, and so on. Okay. And so we just need to draw all these uh, 20 triangles. Now this is the normalized function, very straightforward. We just divide each component uh, by its magnitude. And uh, so this is the initialization, and uh, we use GLOFO to create uh, a different volume. And we will draw each triangle with a different color. We generate a color with different values uh, using a random number generator. Okay. So this returns a value between 0 and 1 randomly. And uh, each color has three components. Each component has a random value. And uh, this is the viewpoint 888. So that means it is at the right side, uh, up, and in front. Okay. We have to queue the back faces. Okay. So we don't display uh, back faces. Faces that are drawn clockwise. Okay, we only display faces that are drawn anti-clockwise. Okay. So here, so we basically draw the 20 triangles. We first get a color, okay, and set the color, and these are the three vertices of uh, the triangle. Okay. I said uh, triangle I, okay. And uh, it has uh, three components x, y, c. Okay, it's corresponding to zero, one, two, and so this add means address to uh, the first value, okay, zero. Yeah. And so this basically we draw the uh, triangle. We draw twenty triangles, each with a different color. Okay. And now we need a main. The main is uh, simple. So this is the main, nothing special. Uh, we uh, we don't need uh, this with handle at this moment, so we comment that out. Okay. So and this is our big file. We just need to link to the cut library and the GUI library and the GL library. Okay, nothing special. So we need two programs, main.cpp and icos.cpp, okay. And then we compile it to icos. So we make, okay. So we generate this exec executable icos, okay. We execute that, okay. So we can see that uh, this is the 20 phase icos hydron. Each face has a different color. Which is generated randomly. Okay. And now we can use subdivision to create more faces. So suppose uh, we have the written these functions, subdivision function. Okay. So we have a function called draw triangle. So basically, to draw the triangle. We have to provide the vertices v1, v2, and v3. Okay, again, we have a different color okay, using the get color function. Okay, and set the color using geo color free fv. Okay, and the geo v vertices okay, specifies the uh, vertices v1, v2, v3. Now we have the geo long mode. We don't need to use it at this point because we don't use lights, but we'll use that later. Okay. So we leave it there. And now this is the subdivide function. We have three parameters, v1, v2, v3, which are pointers to the vertices 
uh, data. And the depth is the number of times we want to do this recursively. And we want to we to free we free one are the uh, midpoints that we discuss. Okay, these uh, midpoints we want to we to free we free one. And uh, it is half of uh, the corresponding vertices. Okay. And then we normalize the uh, vectors, uh, basically the points here, v1, 2, v2, 3, v3, 1, okay, so that they will be pushed to the face. And then we carry out a subdivision further, like uh, v1, 2, v2, v1, uh, sorry, v1, v1, 2, v3, 1, okay, corresponding to this triangle, v1, v1, 2, v3, 1, and then the other is v1, 2, v2, v3, uh, v2, 3, uh, is this one. So today, four triangles. And this is the display. Uh, this is the who look at. So we, our viewpoint is in at the right side, upper side, and the front. Okay. And we have to, uh, well, we discussed that, okay, cue the f face again, okay, cue the back face. And now uh, we don't need to get color here. So we just need to sub divide. Okay. So these are the three vertices V1, V2, V3. Okay. And also the depth, suppose we want to do it two times at this point. Okay. And now, so we can compile it. Oh, we don't have the, it's here. So you can see that by subdivision, we create a polyhedron with 320 triangles. Okay. Now we can do it one more step, okay. three times. So now we have uh, more than 1,000 triangles. So we, com we compile this. Okay. So you can see that uh, this is the new uh, a good uh, polyhedron. Okay. And well, it looks better if we use light okay, instead of color to represent uh, the sphere. Okay. So in this case, we need uh, the light and we don't need uh, the color anymore. So suppose uh, we put the light in Okay, we have written that. Okay, so this is the light routine. Nothing special. We have the light. Basically, it is white light one one one, and the light position is one one from this direction because the fourth component is zero. That means it is a directional light, and the diffuse material, the coefficients are all one. Just simple. The same for specular. And for the ambient, it is more, it's a little bit more red, okay, as it is 0 0.25, other the two components 0 0.2, okay. And then, uh, as usual, we specify the uh, material coefficients using geo material, okay, for uh, ambient, diffuse, and spectra. And for spectra, we need to specify the sunniness. And then we just have one light, GL light zero. Okay. And the position of it is given by light position. Okay. So it is a directional light. 
Okay, and the color of the light okay, is given by light. The array. It is a white light. Okay, for all diffuse ambient and specular. Okay, we enable the light and enable light zero. Okay. So we just need to add this. Yeah, we need light. So we don't need the, the get color actually. So we will compile this. So you can see that uh, this looks better, right? And not more light is weird. Okay. Even though we know that uh, it is composed of triangles, but with the light, you don't see the triangles. You see it, uh, the small. Uh, uh, it's pretty smooth. Okay. Now we can even do better okay, by adding more light to it. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, now we spec we have to specify the normal, and as we did before, when we draw the triangle. We specify the uh, normals. So the normals for a sphere, it is just the same as the point. Okay. So for other uh, figures, they may not be the same. But for a sphere, okay, the point okay, is basically the same as the sphere. So v this is v1. This is also v1. So v2, the normal is also v2, v3. Okay. So that's why it works. Uh, it works here. Now, uh, I've written another one that added more light to it so that uh, we can have uh, three spheres representing the sun, the earth, and the moon. Okay. And we do animation. Okay. Now, these are the same as before. Okay. All these are the same. Except now, I draw a sphere. I draw a sphere is to uh, draw the polyhedron and uh, recursively. Okay, so we do that three times. So that means that means the sphere has the a thousand twenty four uh, triangles. Okay, and we decide the types. The all these are for the lights. Okay, for ambient. In this order, ambient, diffuse, and specular. So the uh, sun material, sun red means the mat uh, sun material. So it's more red, 0 0.25. So this ambient, diffuse, and specular. And then another uh, matrix is for the moon material. It's more yellow. Okay, one one. Okay, the ambient, okay, uh, diffuse, and specular. And the earth. Okay, is a little bit more blue because it has a larger blue component. Okay, and the shininess is still the same twenty five. Okay, so we are so the uh, materials are in this order: ambient, specular, diffuse. Okay, so when we set the materials, okay, we use again this function gl material, okay, and the types. Okay, the types is in order zero, one, two, okay, corresponding to ambient diffuse and specular, okay, and the material that we pass in, and then we set the saliness, okay, and the same thing, set the light. We have three lights here, the light zero, light one, light two, okay, each with uh, the color, okay, it could be the white light or whatever, and also the position, okay. So we use uh, this function GL light FE to set the light. Okay, light zero, light one, light two. Okay, and with uh, the types. Okay, there's uh, amb ambient, diffuse, specular, and also the color. Okay, and then we set the position of that light. Okay. That's how we emit the light. Okay. We have three lights. Okay, the lights: light zero, light one, light two. Okay, and this light zero is uh, the light 
or the color uh, for the earth, white light. And this is light for the sun. Okay. It is a red light. Okay. You can see this is one, this is 0 0.1, so a red light. And this would be the yellow light, mostly yellow for the moon. And we have two positions of the lights. So this position zero is at the center, at the origin. Okay. The one here means a position light. And zero, this is directional light. Okay. And so we set the light. Uh, light zero using the light zero, okay, the white light at this position at the center of the sphere. We enable it, and light one, light light one, we use position one at the center. Okay, light two, we use uh, this is for the moon. We use light position zero directional light. Okay, so. After that, uh, say we need to init light. Oh, here. So also, we use. Uh, Perspective projection, that's better. Okay. And we do animation. AY is the rotation angle about uh, y axis. That's for uh, the Earth. AX, it, for the Moon, it will rotate around the Earth. Okay. And so now we set the uh, material using sun material so, okay, and draw the sphere. So that represents the sun, and we disabled night one. Okay, so the night one will make the sun look red. Okay, and then uh, we calculate x z positions using the a y angle. So this represents uh, an elliptical path. So we move uh, the sphere to that point. So this is the Earth. Okay, we set the material Earth. So this sphere. Okay, it's translated okay, to that point, which is on an ellipse. Okay. And then we disable that light. Okay. Uh, we don't need this. And then we rotate uh, this sphere by this angle AX. Okay. So this is the moon. But, and we move it. Uh, to unit size so that it follows the Earth. Okay. And we scale it also. So this is 40% of a normal sphere, so it's representing the moon, which is smaller. Okay. And set the material using moon material. Then we disable light 2, and then enable light 0 for the sun again. And now here's the animate routine. Okay. Uh, AY is incremented by 1. Uh, each time the timer is triggered, AY is for the Earth. It is slower. The move, uh, the moon will move faster. It is, its angle is AX, so it is incremented more. Okay, it's five. Okay, and now this is the timer handle. Timer handle has uh, an argument interval value. So when this is ex executed. It will call animate. Okay, this is the animate. That means it will increment uh, AX and AY until it is 360 degrees and start from zero again. Okay. And uh, we display uh, the image and it will call this function, cut timer fun. Okay. And this is the copy function timer handle here. And this is the value 100. Okay, it's this value. Okay. Uh, so this 100 value represents 100 millisecond. That means every 100 milliseconds, this is called. That means animate is called. Okay. So the uh, position of the sun, uh, sorry, the Earth and the Moon will be changed. Okay. And uh, to start, okay. 
to use this animate, we need the vis handle okay, when it is visible. Okay, then the timer handle, uh, this function will be called, and after that it will be called recursively okay, because of this. Okay, and now we do need to have the uh, this okay, this handle. Okay copy function uh, initialized here okay so now let's uh, compile this so make this is I go as free okay so so this is the, what uh, is displayed from that program so the yellow sphere represents the moon. This is the Earth. So the Earth rotates around the Sun, and the moon rotates around the Earth. Okay. And uh, let's say the light source is from the center. So that's why you can see that uh, the moon and the, sun, uh, the Earth are illuminated when it's facing uh, the Sun. And of course, you can add more uh, planets to this system. Okay. And it's not difficult, you just need to work all the details. Okay. And you have seen that. So we create uh, something just by using triangles. And indeed, you can represent or create any 3D objects using triangles or uh, planar polygons. Okay. Yeah, thank you for watching. Okay, bye.